Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Cassie. I talk all things fashion, previously pregnancy, now motherhood. I have a daughter, Chloe. She's three and a half months now. So today, I think this is the first video I'm putting out post her labor story. So today I figured we'd just talk about all things postpartum and do a little get ready with me. I have never done a get ready with me before. So we'll see how this goes. Also, Jordan is gone for the day and baby girl is sleeping upstairs. So hoping she will stay napping the whole time we do this video, but you know, we'll see. Babies are on their own schedule. So start out moisturizing, very important. Anytime I'm doing my makeup and Chloe is awake, I swear I'm like describing everything I'm doing as if I were doing like a get ready with me video. I do get ready with me for Chloe like every morning. So let's see, let me pull my questions up. So if you guys are not following me on Instagram, I put a question bubble up on my Instagram and had you guys ask postpartum questions. So definitely the most commonly asked question was, how are you feeling um, in regards to like postpartum recovery and everything like that? So it's been three and a half months, so it's been a while, but I also had a really easy, incredible, amazing labor. So I really did not have much of a recovery period. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I need to get some like tea or something in my throat. Um, but yeah, so I only had one first degree tear and um, blood for like two weeks or so. Um, but really the recovery process was so easy. After like the first night I felt like I got hit by a truck, but after that I was really doing okay. Okay, had to check on baby girl, got myself some tea get back into it. So physical recovery from labor was super easy. Very grateful. Emotional recovery, still pretty good compared to a lot of the stories I hear, but I was so emotional for the first like two weeks. I would cry like at the drop of a hat um, real quick. So on a normal day, I have just been using this um, Tarte Amazonian clay BB cream. It is the best. For the sake of this video, because I'm actually getting ready for once, I will actually use foundation, but on a normal day, I generally wouldn't at this point, um, just being realistic. So yeah, the first two weeks after having Chloe, I cried so much, but it wasn't like bad crying. It was like, I was just felt so loved. I felt so happy. I'd be like laying in bed next to Jordan and like we'd be looking across at each other and looking at Chloe and I would just like start bawling because I love them both so much. Um, my parents came and visited and they were like meal prepping things for me and um, I just thought it was the kindest thing so I bawled. And so I was just like on the ver verge of tears at all times. And uh, so that was how postpartum went for me. Again, that was all like just the first two weeks and after that, I pretty much felt like my normal self. Um, yeah, so I think that covers that. How are you adjusting to life with baby? Um, I think we're adjusting well. I had three months maternity leave, which was fantastic, but now I'm back to work and um, just getting used to that. We're kind of creating new schedules for ourselves and I think it's good. There's definitely, I think the hardest part for us was like sitting down to eat dinner because it never fails. As soon as I get a plate of food in front of me, Chloe's like, you know what? I know I ate 45 minutes ago, but I could eat again. And um, so we've just gotten to the point that I will like put on the, my breast friend pillow that like snaps around your waist and she like sits here and she eats while we eat. And <laughs> That's the best way we found for both of us to have an uninterrupted dinner or else we're like eating in shifts. One person eats while the other plays with her and then we have to switch. So I think that has been the biggest adjustment so far. Is there anything you didn't expect? Yes. I definitely feel like there's been things that I didn't expect. So one thing, I watch a lot of YouTube videos. So a lot of what I learned about um, young momhood and stuff, I learned from YouTube um, or just like watching people, uh, mom vlogs, things like that. So I had it in my head on maternity leave. I had told Jordan like, oh my gosh, I'll be able to 
meal prep. Like I'll do some crock pot meals for you. So when you get home from work, like dinner will be done. Cause Jordan actually does the cooking in our family. But I was like, I'm gonna be home all day with a newborn and newborn sleep all the time. I mean, it's so much done. <laughs> so I had in my head that I was gonna do a ton of chores and just be super productive during maternity leave because babies sleep all the time. Well, then I had a baby who wants to be held all the time. She does not like being, she does not sleep well not being held. Um, she's gotten better now that she's three and a half months, but probably the first two months of her life, if you wanted her to nap, she was napping on you and that's just how it was. So, um, yeah, did not get much done. I watched a lot of TV. It was so hard because it was like, I have all the time in the world. I'm just sitting here watching TV, but I'm holding her. So I can't really do any other tasks. And um, I know other people do a lot of baby wearing or they like put them on a mat on the ground next to them while they do chores. She's okay with the baby wearing, but only if she's like at a sleepy state or if you're up and like moving around, but also with the baby wearing, I don't necessarily trust it to be like bending over doing dishes. I still feel like I have to be holding her at least with one hand. So maybe that's on me. But um, yeah, I definitely expected that I'd be able to do more during maternity leave when I was home with her. So maybe that's just because of the kind of baby she is. I know I like spoil her a little bit. My family tells me this, like, it's okay to let them cry. Like they need to know that you can set them down and that you'll be right back. But we're not there yet. So yeah, that's one thing I would expect. Um, I also wanted to say, sorry, it's kind of like got foundation all over it now. The Clinique Chubby Stick, this thing, incredible. I'm obsessed, um, especially when I'm doing just like my everyday makeup. This is amazing because you just like throw it on for a quick contour and rub it in. It is so good. So just wanted to preface that before I put that on. Um, are you sleeping okay? <laughs> Had you asked me this question a week ago, I would have been like, oh yeah, we're sleeping through the night. It's fantastic. She's an angel. I still think she's an angel, but um, we are now into the four month sleep regression that just started literally this week. And um, yeah, so that's new, but I'll give kind of an update. So when she first was born, she was I had to wake her every three hours to feed her. And I mean, like I would wake her. She would, would wake for some of the feeds, but she basically just wanted to sleep. She's such a good baby. Um, so as soon as she got up to her birth weight at two weeks, um, they were like, okay, you don't need to wake her to feed. So then she was just waking up like two or three times a night and we were getting like pretty long stretches in. And then at probably two months, I would say, um, or probably one month she went down to waking up once per night. And then at about two months, she was sleeping through the night. So easiest baby ever. We like people would talk to us and be like, Oh, you have a newborn. You must be exhausted. And we were both like, no, we're doing totally fine. Um, and I think people thought we were lying to them, but it's true. We were doing really well, but now it's gotten a little bit more difficult because we're entering that sleep regression. So she wakes up the last few nights uh, like three times, I think. And um, most of the time I'm just like putting her, I'm being keep, <clears throat> hold please. <clears throat> most of the time I'm just putting the binky back in her mouth or like putting my hand on her chest. She really likes that. Again, like the physical contact. Um, and she goes right back to sleep but it's definitely less restful. Um, and then she'll wake up at some point between like usually right around five o'clock and she'll need a feed and then she'll go back down for a few hours. So that's kind of our schedule. Sleep all in all has been pretty great. We've gotten really lucky with that. How is breastfeeding going? So breastfeeding is going great. I'm gonna be honest when, before I had a baby, and people would like post photos on Instagram and whatnot of them feeding their child. I was like, I don't know, that feels a little like personal. I don't know that I need to see that. Like, I it was a little weird to me, but now I totally get it. Breastfeeding is amazing. What happened to all of my brushes? I have not done full makeup since we moved here. So I'm like realizing, I don't know that all of my makeup made it back in the right place. So that's gonna be fun.
Um, I guess we'll use this brush. So yeah, um, breastfeeding is amazing. I get it now. Sorry for judging before. Um, but yeah, it's just so nice to have that time to like snuggle. And I feel like especially early on before they're showing much personality, you're able to see a lot of their personality when they're breastfeeding. And um, so it's just really sweet. Um, my milk was a little slow to come in, which was frustrating. It didn't come into like day six. So the first couple days she was like, eh, I'm not that hungry, whatever, it's fine. And then all of a sudden she was like, okay lady, this is ridiculous. I need some milk. And she would like be headbutting me like crazy. I was like, sorry girl, that's all I got. Um, but yeah, by like day six, the waters were flowing. It was fantastic. And um, I did learn something though. So I had heard again from moms on YouTube that it was important to pump every night to like empty the breast to make sure you didn't get mastitis or anything. And so um, I was also pumping those first few days because they say it helps your milk come in. So I was pumping all along. Even when the milk came in, I kept pumping every night because I thought I was supposed to. Then we ended up at lactation, which is a whole nother story. Um, my milk supply was fine. But um, yeah, ended up there. I was telling them about like our schedule and whatnot. And they're like, girl, this is why you have oversupply and you're like waterboarding her in the face you should not be pumping right now. Apparently you should wait until they're like a month old to pump because that first month your body is regulating and trying to figure out how much milk it needs to produce. So by doing that additional feed, I was essentially telling my body, I need you to make that much milk. And it was. So um, the pressure was a little high. So once I stopped pumping, things kind of worked themselves out and it got a whole lot better. So that is something that I learned about breastfeeding. But yeah, all in all, it's going great. Losing the baby weight. So um, I gained, I wanna say like 32-ish pounds during my pregnancy and the first week I lost 10 pounds, um, which was essentially her plus a little bit of fluid. Um, the second week though, I lost another 10 pounds. So 20 of it came off like immediately and then I think I weighed myself three months postpartum and I was back down to my pre baby weight. So um, a lot of that I've heard is just from breastfeeding that if you exclusively breastfeed, it's a lot easier to lose the baby weight. I don't know why that is, um, but that's kind of where we're at. So now I'm just more focused on like starting to work out again. I haven't really done much more than walk at this point, but um, once we kind of get our schedule down and things are a little bit more relaxed, cause we also just moved literally this past week and um, it's also motorcycle season. So Jordan's busy with like race weekends and stuff. So as we have time, I wanna get back into not just my consistent walking routine, but also throwing in some like workouts and things. I got a whole list of workouts to help with diastasis recti. I only had like one to two fingers of separation, so it wasn't that bad, but definitely something that I want to work on just to get some core strength back, you know? How is Jordan adjusting to being a dad? He's adjusting really well, guys. I am like so excited. Not that I was expecting him not to, but it's funny because he always used to say like, oh, I want him when they can walk and talk and you could have a conversation with them and like go do stuff with them. He didn't really um, get the appeal of the baby stage, which I feel like a lot of guys are like that, but he has been loving it. It is so cute to see them together. She's definitely a daddy's girl. Anytime he like comes home from work or whatever, she just lights up. He gets probably more smiles than I do, which is fine. <laughs> um, oh goodness, I should have grabbed a Q-tip, um, but yeah. He's absolutely loving it and their bond is really, really cute. Advice for other first time moms. So if you're watching this video and you are pregnant right now, I think the biggest thing is just mentally prepare as much as you possibly can. Um, obviously you can only be prepared for so much, but I've been so grateful. I feel like I did research for so many years because it took us a while to have a baby that I don't feel like I had like, I didn't feel like I had that identity crisis of losing myself or anything like that because 
I've been wanting this for so long and it's just so fulfilling to finally be here. And then also with the labor process, I had an incredible labor. I will link my birth story down below. And again, a lot of that I feel like was due to the preparation. I knew what all the stages were and what I wanted to do to manage the pain through those stages. And um, I knew all my options. So when things did not go as planned, I knew which direction I wanted to go. So um, definitely do your research, prepare mentally, physically. Um, I know it's a little bit hippie, but I loved the birth affirmations and like the meditations. I thought that was really helpful just getting in the mind space so that when you're actually in labor, you can go to that labor land place and be like, okay, feeling the wave wash over me. It's gonna, you know, 60 to 90 seconds, it's gonna be gone. Like it builds, it goes away, it builds, it goes away. And you're able to like stay in that relaxed state. So um, prepare, prepare, prepare is what I have to say for that. Um, and also don't feel like you need to buy all the things. Babies truly don't need that much. She has an entire gorgeous nursery that we use to change her clothes and change her diapers. That is all she does in there. We didn't need to do that right now. I don't regret it because it's beautiful and I love it, but don't stress yourself out. They don't need a lot. They need a place to sleep, some clothes to wear, and some milk to drink, and that's about it. Wow, this is gonna be not a very great getting ready with me video if I can't actually fully get ready, but um, I may need to get creative. Don't judge this, this is not my normal process. But, um, so next question, baby number two. So, I have been thinking about this so much lately because my sister, for those that don't know, had a baby six weeks after me. And so we used like the same app for um, while we were pregnant to like track everything and there's a community section on there. And um, so yeah, we both used that. And oh, that's where it is. Where did I set that? Hang on, I think I know where my brush is. Ta-da! Found all of my brushes. Hallelujah. Now we can truly get ready with me. So baby number two. Um, so we've been using that app. I have not gotten on it post baby because I feel like honestly, the people were ridiculous and I do not care for their input. I don't have questions for them. I don't really care to hear all their issues. Um, anyways, that may sound harsh, but people are crazy on the internet. You know this. Um, so I have not been on there, but my sister has and she so it's June right now She had a baby in April. So she is in like a pregnancy group with everyone that had a baby in April Guys, there are multiple people in her group that are pregnant already again How I mean, I know how but if you're already finding out you're pregnant in June Then you got pregnant in May and if you just had a baby in April, you did not wait those six weeks Okay, and that is important. They tell you don't let anything in there, not a tampon, not nothing for six weeks. But it's funny because I've watched other girls' videos on YouTube and they're like, oh my gosh, I've never waited six weeks. Girl, your doctor is telling you to wait six weeks. You can wait six weeks. So, anyways, um, yeah, so I was like, I did not even know, I mean, I knew it was possible, but I didn't know that that many people got pregnant that quickly. That is wild to me. Um, because I know for a lot of people, if you're exclusively breastfeeding, that um, it's like, breast. Uh, I'm gonna butcher the name, so I'm not even gonna try. But there's something about like, if you're exclusively breastfeeding, that your period doesn't come back for a while, so you're not really ovulating, so you're generally pretty safe. Um, and then for us with Chloe, we were actively trying for a long time. Like, the days we knew I was fertile, you know? And it still didn't happen. So I'm like, I have not been concerned that we would get pregnant accidentally right away. But now I'm like, gosh, are you more fertile right after you give birth? Should I actually be concerned? Um, sorry, this is getting very long winded. But um, yeah, so um, unless something happens on its own, I'm thinking we'll wait until the year that Chloe's about to turn to and that's when we would go for the next one. So I wanna have some good time just with her. And then also I would like to be staying at home full time by the time we have baby number two. So that obviously requires a lot of like financial planning. We want to be in a house, which we were hoping to buy a house this summer, but the housing market here in Utah is 
literally insane and we would have been spending half a million dollars on like a junker in a bad neighborhood. So we said no thank you to that. Um, but yeah, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking like, what year would that be? 2024, we start going for number two, but God is ultimately in control of that. So if he wants to put one in me prior to that, I will take it. It'll just um, require a little bit of strategicness on our part to get me to the point where I can stay home. So um, yeah, that's the plan for baby number two. And I would love a boy for the next one, but you know, we'll take what we get. So last but not least, if you guys followed our fertility journey, I shared about the pituitary cyst that I have on, um, well, the cyst I have on my pituitary gland. So that um, caused us some issues when we were trying to get pregnant just because my hormone levels were, were all off and I wasn't getting a period naturally. So um, anyways, I wanted to give you guys an update. So of course the battery died on the last question. Um, so anyways, my endocrinologist told me that whenever I have a baby to just get another MRI that year since my deductible will be met. And um, so that is what I did. I went and got an MRI like two weeks ago probably now. And um, I don't have the results back yet, so I guess it's not really an update, but had to go do that. And then um, depending on how that comes back, we'll dictate some things, but I don't want to get back on the bromocryptine, which is what I was on before to like force me to have a period. Um, I would like to do it a little bit more naturally. So, um, yeah, that is the plan is, um, I'll work with my new doctors cause I don't really love my endocrinologist to be honest. I love my midwives. So, um, I'm going to see if like how everything's looking with the cyst, if it's looking same as normal, no new concerns. Um, I'm probably going to wait, I think like 10 months, um, which would be December and then go in and see my midwives if my period hasn't come back. So that is the plan, which is so funny because I asked you guys on Instagram, um, like how long did it take for you guys to get your period back? Sorry, it's really hard to talk and do eyeliner at the same time. So I was asking you guys on Instagram how long it took you and I was like super curious and I mean, it was still good to learn, but then I remembered like, oh yeah, before Chloe, I wasn't having regular periods. So I doubt mine's just gonna come back in a regular fashion. So. so like I said, this is my first getting ready with me video and I feel like I did not do great because I showed you all of like probably three products. Um, so we'll have to try this format again if you know, if it's something you guys even enjoy and I will actually show you the products I use. I'll actually have my brushes ready and like all in one place. It's just a little bit of a mess with the move. Literally, if you look behind me, it's just like a sea of boxes. <laughs> that is life right now. Um, but yeah, I'm just glad to be able to hop back on here. Um, hoping I can get this video edited and out to you guys in a somewhat quick fashion. And um, me and Jordan have already talked. We really want to try and continue this YouTube stuff. Um, I really enjoy it. And it's a way potentially for me to get to stay home in the future. So um, if you would like to be part of that and um, <laughs> make my dreams come true, subscribe to this channel. Um, I'm hoping to have a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. That would be lovely. I think we're like halfway there right now. Um, so go ahead and subscribe down below. I'm also curious if you are not a current subscriber, how you found this video, go ahead and comment down below how you found me, um, where you're at, anything like that. I love interacting with you guys that way. So um, thanks for getting ready with me. Baby is still not up, so I may just go have a lazy breakfast after I clean up all of this junk. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.